Okay, so now what we are going to go through is um, uh, example programs to send and receive a message in both directions. So we call it as duplex communication uh, using connectionless sockets. So which means you should be able to send a message from one process and the other process should be able to receive the message and also send back a reply. Okay. So the way we are going to do this, uh, so we have two programs. One is called the datagram uh, um, receiver sender program. And then we are going to have uh, a datagram sender receiver program. So this is going to be like uh, the first program, the datagram receiver sender is going to receive a message and then send a reply, whereas the datagram sender receiver program is going to first send a message and then wait for a reply. So, which means we should really, between the two, we should really start the receiver sender first because it's going to be the first thing to receive the message. Okay, so let's go through the receiver sender. So the first part of the receiver sender program is, should be similar to receiving a message. That's what we saw in the datagram receiver uh, program in the previous video where we just receive a message and be prepared for it. And that's what we are doing here. I'm just increasing the message length to 60, uh, declaring the local port at which I want to receive the message. And then I'm creating the socket on that port and then uh, initializing my, uh, not initializing, I'm just uh, creating the byte array of that size max length and then uh, so please make sure you look at the previous videos on sender and receiver so I went through over in detail what we're doing in each of the steps so I'm just uh, uh, going through these steps a little uh, faster here because we have gone through that in more detail in another video so I am now uh, again um, preparing myself to receive the packet so datagram packet object and this is the name of the buffer in which I want to store the receiving con uh, contents that are received. Receive buffer and the max length. And then this is now our blocking call. My socket dot receive packet. So uh, once the control goes to this line, the program basically uh, stops there and waits for an incoming packet. So that's the time we go and send a message. So this is the program for sender receivers. So again, as I said, uh, this is the first part of it should be similar to sending a packet. So um, I get the input for the machine name uh, that hosts the uh, receiver sender program and the um, uh, port number at which the receiver program that's hosted there is running. And then the message I really want to send from the sender receiver and uh, now we are following the same convention that we had in the standard loan sender program that uh, to send a message we don't need to open it on a specific socket as well as a specific port number uh, we will do the same thing here but remember here the receiver sender has to also send back a reply so we'll see how to handle this we could specify a specific port number we want and the receiver sender should send back to the same port number but we it could be still done uh, so if you don't specify a port number here, the operating system is going to find the port number and the receiver sender will be able to find that port number as we'll see and then send back to the port number at which the socket is open. So what you're going to do is just open a socket as if you're just going to send something and then transform this contents of the string to a byte array and then prepare a datagram packet that has the byte array and then the byte array length and the IP address of the receiving host and then the port number at which receiving uh, uh, process is running. So this is the receiver host is the uh, machine that hosts the receiver sender process. Okay, And this is the port at which the receiver sender process is running. And then you are now going to send the packet to the receiver program, receiver sender program. So now the receiver sender program uh, will be unblocked is going to receive the message and the contents of the message is in the receive buffer and that's the so you are now considering a string out of it and you're just printing it so this will print the message that was received so so far it is just like this has been the receiver so this is the code for the receiver and this is the code for the sender so now the roles switch which means we would have now um, the receiver sender to send back up the reply 
and uh, the sender receiver should be prepared to receive a message so uh, let's look at the receiver sender sorry the sender receiver now the sender receiver that is now uh, preparing itself to receive a message the reply from the other process so we will not close this socket will we as i said we open the socket on some port which is not known to the user but we'll just stay with that socket so we'll just prepare ourselves to receive a reply so again i fix the message length or uh, maximum message length to be 60 bytes and then create a byte array to receive same thing as you do to receive a message open uh, a datagram packet uh, that is uh, the packet that will be stored in the incoming message and then call my socket dot receive uh, and then pass this datagram so this is the name of the packet so you could pass anything for this packet name the same name that you create here okay should be passed of course so this is the name of the class datagram packet and this is the object of the class datagram packet so when you call this receive method on this my socket basically it's a blocking call so your sender receiver is going to be blocked until you get a reply so now let's call the receiver sender. So the receiver has already received a message and it has printed the contents of that message. So now it is ready to reply back to the sender. So as I said, the receiver needs to know to what IP address and port number it has to reply to. So there is a method called get address in the datagram packet class because this is this packet is of type datagram packet. So there is a method uh, by name get address in the datagram packet class and if you call that method on this packet object you are going to get the IP address of the remote host. So in this case remote host is the sender which are, whichever host that sent this packet because this packet is basically what you are receiving here right. So if you call the get address method on that packet that will basically give you the IP address of the remote host that sent the packet. So that's going to be your sender. So that's going to give you the sender's IP address. So same thing, the get port method is going to give you the port number of the process that sent the message, basically the remote process. So get port called on the datagram packet is going to get you the sender's port number. Okay. So now you know the sender's IP address and port number. So all you have to do is just reply to the uh, send the reply to that IP address and port number. So I'm going to input the message that I want to send as reply from the command line argument and then I'm going to just create the byte array, uh, basically extract the uh, bytes from the string, so transform the string as a byte array and store it as send buffer. Now and this is the same as sending a packet, so I'm creating a datagram packet of uh, name datagram basically and then uh, passing the send buffer and the length of the buffer, the sender's IP address and sender port number. Here the sender still uh, corresponds to the program that initially sent the message. So the sender address here is the IP address of the sender receiver. And sender port is the port number at which the sender receiver is running. And then you send the datagram uh, on the same socket that you used uh, to uh, receive. Just use the same socket and send it back and then close the socket. So now the sender receiver is, which has been waiting to receive the datagram, would, will receive the packet and then uh, the contents of the packet will be stored in this receive buffer. You just consider a string out of that receive buffer and print the contents of the string and then you can close this socket. So now let me run it and show. <coughs> so of course you can compile the two programs. Sorry, this is not here. So this is receiver sender. Okay, so receiver sender and sender receiver. All right. So between the two, we should start the receiver sender first. So Java datagram receiver sender, and that is this program here. It takes uh, two arguments: the port number at which it is running the receiver sender, and the message it wants to send as a reply. So I'm going to send the pass the port number. Let's say one, two, three, four. Let's say the question is hello, how are you, or something like that. So you can say I'm fine. Okay. Of course, you can make it more dynamic by using scanner. Depending on uh, what the question was, you could reply for that. Okay. I'm not doing that. So I'm just pass. I know what the question would be, and so I'm just getting the input from the user, uh, the response. 
So now I, I can show the sender receiver program running. Um, so this is my sender receiver. So it takes three arguments, the IP address, which will be your local host. And then local host is one word, okay? And then one, two, three, four, three, port number. And let's say the question is, hello, how are you? And then you get a reply, I'm fine, okay? Now let me change it so we can make it a little bit interactive. So let's say I don't want to get this as a command line argument. I can use scanner. So for that, you have to import java.util, yeah. And let's say I use scanner new uh, scanner of uh, system dot in now I can say string message to so you can even send uh, well it will wait for a reply so that's good enough uh, input scanner dot um, next uh, line that's going to read the I think next is going to read the word so next line is going to read the entire thing so that's going to be this okay so that's going to read a line hopefully let's see that works or not it should um, all right so now let's start the receiver sender so we don't need it to be prepared with the reply it could be any question so I'm starting this here sender so all I need now is just one argument because I commented this line so all I need is this uh, the port number at which I want to run this all right <clears throat> and let's do this so here I am I did not change Right, so this is receiver sender that started so port number. So sender receiver is not changed. So I'm still asking the question, hello, how are you? Right. So uh, for sender receiver, you need the uh, local host, the port at uh, the host at which the um, receiver sender is running, and then the port number at which the receiver sender is running, and the question and message you want to send to the, to the receiver sender. So now it's waiting for your reply. So now we can say I'm fine. I'm fine and then you can continue I'm eating or something and that will be received here okay now you can even play with the reply so let's say I want uh, to reply I want uh, let's say um, I'm going to send only 10 bytes Right, so this sender receiver is you set the message length, right? So which means you can accept only ten bytes at most. Okay, the sender receiver is willing to accept a reply that is that can be at most only ten characters. So if the uh, other end you send more than ten characters, it will be truncated. Okay, so that's what I'm going to show now. So receivers uh, we change what the sender receiver. So let me compile this. So this is still the question. Now you see here, this is sender receiver. It's waiting for the reply, right? So of course, the receiver sender is not started. So let me start the receiver sender. So let me now start the sender receiver. So now let's see. I am fine. Should be fine, right? But if you're trying to send more than, uh, of course, this is not started yet. So always start the receiver sender. Okay, so now let me say I'm fine, I am eating, I am walking, or something like that. You see here, only I am fine is received. This is like 10 characters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is eat. This period is 10 characters. Only 10 characters will be received. The rest will be dropped or truncated, so will be lost. Okay. So even in our simple datagram sender receiver program, if you notice, that's what will happen. So let's make it 10 characters. So receiver can receive only 10 characters. So let's uh, recompile our receiver program. 
and start receiver program at this uh, port number and let's say the sender sends what this is a local host and then one port and then the message is like uh, my name which is pretty long more than 10 characters so it's going to receive just my first name that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten including that blank space if you want to try something else like my this okay i didn't start the receiver so you see here should start the receiver first so let me start the receiver and send that so the first 10 characters are received okay so let me stop here